Hello everyone. No doubt mechanical properties of matter. Well, I hope uh, everybody knows about this term, elastic material or elasticity and similarly you must have heard about plastic materials and plasticity. This is something which we are going to discuss in this chapter, Mechanical Properties of Matter. Uh, just to have an idea whether you know something about this particular chapter or not, tell me in the comment box if you have heard something like this. Which one is more elastic, steel or a rubber band? What do you think is the most elastic thing? Although I haven't taught you anything regarding this, but still if you have the knowledge, then answer this in the comment box, which one is more elastic, steel or the rubber band? Well, many of you are saying rubber band, but answer is steel. So just to understand this strange thing, we'll study this chapter. The way elasticity is defined, if you have the idea of that, you can easily answer questions like which one is more elastic and which one is more plastic. To do one thing, write down first of all elasticity. Write down with elasticity tendency to regain, tendency to regain original shape. when an external force when an external force which cause the deformation is removed It's called elasticity. It's called elasticity. Understand this. Let's say we have a wire. Let's say we've got two wires. Of identical length, cross-sectional area and everything. You applied some force. Which we'll call external force. To these wires. This is wire A and this is wire B. Now, when you apply these external forces on these similar shape and size wires, they are of different materials, 
you will find that there is some deformation present in this wire and there is some deformation present in the second wire. Now the way elasticity is defined is if I remove the external force due to these external forces this much deformation just so that you can see it I have highlighted this part somewhat less deformation is present in the second wire the thing which you see in blue is the deformation let me highlight it more up to this point you have the wire in black and the portion which you see in blue is the deformation produced by these external forces now the way elasticity is defined is if I remove these external forces then these wires have a tendency to regain the original shape and size tendency to remove this deformation once external force is also removed is defined as elasticity so the question which i asked you is if you have steel and if you have rubber then which one is more elastic and what you thought is that if you have a rubber band and you stretch it then it's very easy for you to stress that rubber band and therefore immediately you thought that rubber band is very elastic just the rest of you have elastic ki training mili hui hai. Lekin, if I say that this is the steel wire and this is the rubber band suppose one is steel wire and the other one is what is the rubber band then if you apply same force on a steel wire and you apply same force on a rubber band then once you remove these external forces steel wire has a tendency superior tendency to regain its original length as compared to the rubber band there will be a, some, some sort of deformation present even when you have removed the external force in the rubber band but if your external force is within the limits then steel wire will definitely regain exact shape in which it was present before you started deforming it so the way elasticity is again let me tell you is what is not how much you stretch it how much deformation you can produce it no it's not like that how do you define elasticity the way you develop tendency in the material the tendency to oppose what deformation or once you remove the force to regain the shape they both are same tendency to oppose the deformation part and once you remove the external force tendency to regain the original shape they are both same thing you will understand this once we apply the mathematical model and all so for steel and rubber from now on you will remember that steel by virtue of definition of elastic materials is more elastic than the rubber band write down this as a statement steel by virtue of definition of elastic materials by virtue of definition of elasticity is more elastic than rubber then what is rubber rubber is more of plastic thing what is plastic thing the thing which even when external force which cause deformation is removed maintains some sort of deformation 
is called what plastic material write down plasticity write down the definition of plasticity when an external force when an external force acting on a material produces some deformation in it and then once it is removed external force is removed and then once it is removed if material still maintains some deformation in it we say that material is plastic that is rubber band is more plastic that is rubber band is more plastic than steel so remember steel is more elastic than rubber band but rubber band is more plastic than steel Do you guys understand this much difference between elastic and plastic materials? Yes or no? Good. Now to understand this elastic and plastic things, we use some factors and the first one is called stress. How to find whether material is elastic or plastic? There should be a mathematical criteria for that and for that we need to develop certain things. First is stress. What is stress? This is the wire. And just so that you can see it clearly, I'm drawing such a large cross section. Just so that you can see this thing. This cross sectional area is A. length of the wire is L if you apply a force on this wire which is F then people have a wrong impression that stress is F upon A Keep looking at this part. If you have studied a little bit of mechanical properties of matter, then I think that everybody would have answered what is the stress? Immediately you would have said F upon A. This is the normal tendency 
which people have, if they have studied mechanical properties of matter, immediately they say that stress is what I have upon A. But no, this is not the stress acting on the body. Now what happens, what is this L? This L is the original length. This is the original length of the wire. Now what happens? This wire due to this force this wire due to this force will get this much deformation. Let's call it delta L. I hope you can see it. This much is change in the length and therefore this is delta L. From this to this. Force which produce this much deformation is F. Now, right at this moment, There is a restoring force present in the wire. Let's call it F dash. And this is the final equilibrium stage. Due to this force, you pull the wire and ultimately everything sets at this point no further deformation is possible right at this stage there is a restoring force acting on the wire which is f dash and this is the equilibrium stage if this is the equilibrium stage then stress is defined as f dash divided by a what is f dash restoring force present in the wire this is f dash and this is the equal sign now to your surprise this f dash is f upon a which is correct ye kya ho gaya yaha wrong tha yaha correct kar diya sab ne ye kya ho raha hai sara kuch now what is this equilibrium equilibrium means this cross section is not moving anywhere yes ka permanent level here ke liye. which tells us what if this is equilibrium then these forces should be of same magnitude so what is this f dash this is what f at equilibrium they both are of same magnitude and therefore stress in this wire at this level is what f dash upon a this f dash is equal to f upon a but in this wire right at this moment stress is not f upon a now let me ask you how many of you will give me the correct value of stress in this wire right at this moment and remember this is there anyone who can tell me what is the stress in the wire at the very beginning and the way stress is defined is what restoring force divided by a and remember what is f this f is an external force which is producing these deformations. So is there anyone who has answered correctly? Good, lot many. Both say. What is stress in the wire right at this moment? Zero. Because abhi yahan par koi deformation nahi hai. Is external force present? Yes. But this is the beginning of deformation. There is no deformation and therefore wire has no tendency to oppose anything. If there is no restoring force, stress is what? Zero. 
is not f upon a. Once you have produced this much deformation at equilibrium, your restoring force and external force, they become exactly what same. This is not the equilibrium stage. This is the equilibrium stage. At this point, what is stress in the wire? Restoring force divided by the cross-sectional area, which is what is zero. What is restoring force? F dash, which is equal to what? F divided by A. I hope you understand difference between this stage and this, and also this being wrong and this being correct. Draw this thing and then we'll write few statements so that you can remember all this. By the way, if you understand everything regarding stress up to this point, then write down yes in the comment box. And especially those who could not write zero, but they understand that how come stress is zero is not f upon a and how come stress is f upon a. If you understand it, then mention yes in the comment box. And note down everything. Write down the statement. Call it figure one and this is figure two. This is figure one. And this is figure two. Stress is defined as stress is defined as force per unit cross sectional area. Stress is defined as force per unit cross sectional area. But this force is an internal force, but this force is an internal force which is nothing but restoring force, which is nothing but restoring force inside the bracket represented by f dash represented by f dash next line in figure one in figure one just when external force is applied in figure one just when external force external force inside the bracket f in figure one just when external force f is applied there is no immediate deformation therefore there is no restoring force and because of this stress 
in the wire is zero. Because of this, stress in the wire is zero. Now, now as gradually wire deforms, now as gradually wire deforms and finally at equilibrium a deformation of delta L takes place inside the bracket shown in figure 2 shown in figure 2 external force F and internal restoring force F dash both are same Remember, because of equilibrium. Stress in the wire will be F dash upon A which is same as F upon A which is same as F upon A. Now, we define stress in two ways. In this figure, you can see that uh, you're trying to pull the body, you're trying to increase its length. So this type of stress is called tensile stress. If you try to increase the length, then this is tensile what is stress remember restoring force if you have a situation like this if you are trying to compress it if you are trying to decrease its length, then as I told you, if you are trying to compress it, and this is called compressive stress. Show this arrow and show this arrow, draw these figures. This is the situation which is tensile and this is Compressive. Very difficult cheese nahi, easy hai, simple sir. Hold on this. Well, I will send you the lecture. One of you is asking something which I gave you in the very beginning. I'll upload the lecture and then you can watch it again. And you can write down everything there. Now, this is uh, the first thing which is stress, and then comes This plastic has nothing to do with these figures. This was just the very first part. After stress, we define strain. Now, 
what is strain strain is delta l upon l that is change in length change in length divided by original length this ratio is given a special name and which is what strain in this case it will be tensile strain in this case it will be compressive strain doesn't matter this is something very easy remember what strain is delta l upon l go down the strain part We'll come back for these things, but before that, try to answer these small things. Look here. We have two identical materials. Everything is identical. Length, cross sectional area, everything. And we are looking at the kilogram stage. We have two wires. The first one is left hand is rigid and the right hand is being pulled by a force F and ultimately an equilibrium is set. Similarly for the second wire you started with the same length, same cross section but this time you are trying to pull it from both ends by using F and F. And this is also in its equilibrium stage. Both are in the equilibrium stage, remember. Which one will develop more change in length? For which one of these two? Let's start systematically. For which one stress is more and for which one strain is more? This is wire 1, this is wire 2. These are the two wires, imagine. For the first one, you keep this, this end rigid and you start pulling this end by F. At equilibrium, this is the stage. The second wire, you start pulling from both ends by applying FF. The question is in which wire there will be more stress and more strain present
I'll give you a hint. I will give you a hint. Let's see how many of you will answer this. By the way, one of you has answered correctly. You understand what FBD is? This is free body diagram of the first figure. Logon ko lagta hai ek hi force hai. Logon ko lagta hai force do hai. Alag alag tarah ke log opinion dete hain. Sunna kya kya. Kuch logon ko lagta hai ki isme zyada स्ट्रेस होगा इसमें नहीं होगा कुछ लोगों को लगता है क्यों उनको लगता है कि इस एफ से ये एफ क्या हो जाएगा कैंसिल एंड देर इज नो स्ट्रेस नथिंग लाइक दैट कुछ लोगों को ऐसा लगता है कुछ लोगों को लगता है कि भाई यहां एक सिंगल फोर्स है यहां दो फोर्स है ज्यादा फोर्स है तो ज्यादा स्ट्रेस होगा द आंसर इज दिस इफ आई आस्क यू टू ड्रॉ फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम ऑफ दिस वायर then this is a free body diagram when i say that when i say that you hold this wire from this point make it a rigid end and then start pulling from this side if i say this is the rigid end then how can you keep it rigid to keep it rigid if you are applying 10 newton force in this direction then you must apply exactly 10 in this direction so when i say this is the rigid end it is not moving then how do you stop this wire from moving apply exactly same force magnitude wise at this end and this part of the left end automatically becomes what a rigid end if i say this is the free body diagram that means both are same and they are same in both wires stress and strain are exactly same kyun is question ko develop kiya to ye kai log kya answer dete hain in this they say that stress is f upon a which is correct remember this is the equilibrium position for this they produce all sorts of answers stress starting from zero f is cancelling this f then writing 2f upon a double the force double the deformation double the stress and all some say f upon a and this is the correct one these two are wrong How many of you understand that stress in this and stress in this and similarly strain are also same? If you understand this question, then write down yes in the comment box. And this is the reason we study mechanics and all, free body diagrams and all. Good. Just write down the statement. Second wire. Second wire. You can also call it figure two if you wish. Second wire is basically free body diagram of the first wire second wire is basically free body diagram of the first wire 
and therefore for both wires and therefore for both wires stress and strain are same for both wires stress and strain are same Change in length is delta L1, change in length is delta L2. We can also write that delta L1 is delta L2. If this is same, divide the whole thing with L. Remember, initially they had same length. So if you are saying that you are having same stress, same change in length, your strain also becomes what? Same. Can mention this also. Now this was a uh, tensile or compressive strain or stress now look at this if You have an object like this, keep this end rigid, apply an external force in this direction, tangential to the cross section. This is perpendicular to the cross section, this is tangential to the cross section, because of this this body will acquire this shape shown in blue That's how it will look. This tangential force is called shear. Shear or tangential. For this type of thing, the stress which is defined is also called shear stress. So once I say shear, remember I'm talking about tangential F upon A. This is definitely at equilibrium, remember now. Shear, the equilibrium restoring force coming from the material will be equal to what external. So this is the shear which is F upon A. This cross-sectional area is A1. This cross-sectional area is A2. This A, what do you think this A should be? Is it A1 or A2? What do you think? Draw this much figure and then tell me in the comment box what do you think this A should be A1 or A2? I 
and the type of deformation I am talking about is this. I hope you can see this box. Now, if I apply a force like this, if a force is acting on this box from this side, it will be called compressive stress. Or instead of applying force from this side, we are, we are applying force coming from this side. As the force comes from this side, let me show it by my hands. If I apply force from this side, I hope you can see that this edge is quite vertical right now. But upon exerting the tangential, I hope you can see the deformation which I am producing. This box is empty and therefore it is collapsing on its own. Had it been a bit solid, then you can easily hold a book. And uh, if you hold a book, you can do it yourself. Hold a book and then give it a slight tangential push like this. And everybody has seen this kind of deformation, which is called what? Shear. And this shear part, you need to remember what? Had it been A1, to Vurdhom kiski baat kar rahe the? Surface se 90 wale force ki. Lekin wo to kya hua karta hai? Compressive or tensile tap off. This force is tangential to what? A2. And therefore, this A for this figure is, remember, A2. So, this A2, remember, is the cross sectional area. In shear stress, when you write F upon A, write down the statement that A should be tangential to what F. Write down this in shear stress. In shear stress, F upon A. A is that cross section which is tangential to the force A is that cross section which is tangential to the force now let's talk about shear strain Look, this much deformation shown with red color from this up to this point. This vertical edge got deformed from this position and up to this position. This much deformation shown in red is delta L and this edge is of length L. Lo confused hote rehte hain L or A mein isliye confused mat ho na and I hope everybody can see all these different colors. This L is the vertical edge. This is delta L deformation. Strain is what? Shear strain is defined as delta L divided by L. For this figure, whole thing now looks like this. This is delta L. This is L. Let's say this much angle is theta. 
If this is theta, then what is tan of theta? Tan of theta is perpendicular upon base. Tan theta is what? Perpendicular delta L divided by base which is L. And we are talking about things where you will not observe this large deformation. The example of book is just so that you can understand it. Because this is too much deformation. We are not interested in this. This is almost plastic deformation. For small deformations, theta will be small. And if theta is small, then tan theta is approximated with theta. What is theta? This angle which you see in the figure is theta. So tan theta is delta L upon L. Strain is defined as change in length divided by length. But which length? Change in this. As such lengthwise, there is hardly any change. So what is delta L in the case of shear? The sideways deformation divided by side length. You can remember it like this. Sideways deformation divided by side length. In simple words, tan theta. Tan theta, if theta is very small, can be approximated with theta. And therefore, shear strain is also represented with the help of angular displacement seen in the figure. Draw this figure and write down everything. Now, the third type of deformation which you can produce in a body is something like this. So far we have seen what uh, we have seen deformations along the length which is tensile or compressive sideways which is shear all you can do what hold a balloon in your hands and try to deform the balloon from all the sides in other words if you change the pressure if you change the atmospheric pressure then there will be a change in the overall volume, volume of the balloon. This type of deformation comes under the category of bulk. So, let's take any orbit shape. This orbit shape is being compressed from every side in this form.
this is F. This F is acting at a very small cross section. <coughs> I hope you can see this. Everywhere F is acting. F, 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 F. For any small cross section A. Remember, A is not the entire area. A is only this small cross section. Then, this F upon A. Is bulk. Stress, but for a balloon, it's not correct to use force and area in this form. For a balloon, this F upon A is simply called what P. What is the F upon A? Pressure. So if you change the outside pressure so that volume of the balloon changes then the kind of stress you are producing is bulk stress for a three dimensional body like this there is no point in saying F upon A. Look confused, how much area is F? Sare ke sare force, lag rahe. force is coming from all sides net force is zero to avoid that confusion we have started using what concept of pressure now this p what is this p this is not the pressure which is already present in the balloon or the outside outside inside this p is more correctly defined in this form Delta P. Why Delta P? Well, I don't have a balloon. Just uh, take example of this ball. Imagine it's a balloon. It has some volume. There is some gas inside. Outside you have the atmosphere. And everything is in equilibrium. Now imagine somehow you can increase the atmospheric pressure. If you can increase the atmospheric pressure, then this ball is going to shrink from all the sides when it shrinks and ultimately an equilibrium arises we're not interested in the pressure at the beginning or pressure at the end instead we are interested in what the pressure change which caused it to shrink in volume that is what we are interested in just you need to visualize this thing. I don't have a balloon with me. Otherwise I could have uh, shown you this thing. But not in that case also. I'll have to uh, release the gas out. Then only volume will decrease. We're not releasing the gas out. The whole thing has same number of molecules and all inside. What you are doing basically. You are increasing the pressure or you are decreasing the pressure. So what is bulk stress? force upon area which force that force which change the volume this ball is already having some volume last or end this ball is already having some volume is atmospheric pressure present yes let's call it let's say atmospheric pressure is 10 just so that we can understand so atmospheric pressure is 10 it has certain volume if I increase the pressure from 10 to 12, 10 to 12 causes what? Change in the volume. So what is that which caused this change? 10, 12 or the 2? Answer is 2. And therefore, we are looking at what? Delta P. And if I write Delta P, let me draw a simple figure over here so that you can understand everything and you can also write accordingly.
So okay. here. सिंप्लिसिटी के लिए अपन एक सिंपल स्पेरिकल बॉल ड्रॉ कर रहे हैं दिस थिंग इज अंडर सम फोर्स एफ वन कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग प्रेशर इज पी वन यू इंक्रीज द फोर्स फ्रॉम एफ वन टू एफ टू corresponding pressure is p2 definitely p2 is greater than p1 originally volume was v1 and now volume is v2 force is not coming from the side force is coming from all the sides it's a bulk thing then when you write f upon a f upon a is not p1 upon a is not p2 upon a is what p2 minus p1 p2 minus p1 strain it will be called volume strain or bulk strain you can call it volume strain or bulk strain this bulk strain is no longer delta l upon l but is delta v upon v change in volume divided by original volume what is delta v v1 minus v2 divided by v1 this is p2 minus p1 p2 minus p1 larger pressure smaller pressure larger volume smaller volume v1 minus v2 divided by v1 that's how you define bulk stress and bulk strain bulk means three dimensional thing if you understand this part then write down yours in the comment box Note down everything. write down statement when a three dimensional body when a three dimensional body is compressed from all the sides compressed or decompressed in both cases uh, you have the same concept we are decompressing means you are moving from this figure to this figure decompressing means you are either decreasing this force 
compressing means you are increasing the force this way compression decompression when a three dimensional body is compressed from all the sides instead of using force upon area instead of using force upon area we use pressure as bulk stress bulk or volume stress you can call it bulk or volume stress but this pressure should be but this pressure should be change in the pressure but this pressure should be change in the pressure inside bracket delta p and because of the delta p and because of the delta p change in volume change in volume is delta v because of this particular delta p you have the change in volume which is delta v so bulk stress uh, if, if if somebody says that uh, longitudinal stress which was tensile and compressive that was longitudinal longitudinal along the length longitudinal stress shear stress bulk stress they all have what same dimensional formula longitudinal stress is f upon a shear is also f upon a bulk is also f upon a but this bulk is also what basically delta p which is change in pressure and everybody knows what is the unit of pressure pascal and therefore you can use pascal for bulk stress also no down this much and rest will discuss in the next class thank you very much one of you is asking how comes stress becomes pressure what is pressure force upon area so this force upon area if if you have a wire like this if i am starting to pull this end in this direction if i am trying to increase the length there is no force coming from these sides force is only present here it's not correct to use pressure in that sense you can but it's not recommended it is simply called what longitudinal stress along the length if i hold the body like this and if i start pushing this and this side force is acting at the very edge only f upon a this is f and this is a it looks like f upon a has the pressure type of thing but it's not pressure it is called what shear force is this and area is this so in this particular situation hold this body and 
compress it from all the sides. So if you compress it from all the sides, how do you define force upon area? In this case, it's better to use the concept of force upon area as pressure. Remember, it's what change in pressure. Now, F upon A is what stress. What is the unit of pressure? Newton per meter square. So this is Newton per meter square. This Newton per meter square is nothing but change in pressure. But using Pascal or Newton per meter square as pressure unit for bulk is correct. For all other cases, it's not correct to use Pascal or anything like that. I hope you understand now.